In a highly controversial change to UK immigration policy, the government plans to send anyone deemed to be entering the country illegally to Rwanda in East Africa. Boris Johnson claimed the move would set a new international standard for dealing with immigration, but it's been heavily criticised by several charities and opposition parties. The scheme intended to undermine people smugglers will apply to men and women, but not children or families, such as those who arrive here in small boats across the channel or on lorries, and it'll include those who've come since the beginning of the year. A deal was signed in the Rwandan capital Kigali today, from where our home editor Mark Easton reports. A handshake in the grip of controversy. This formal agreement between Britain and Rwanda is, according to the Home Secretary, a world first in the approach to dealing with asylum seekers. Men and women arriving in the UK by an unofficial route will have their request for sanctuary ruled inadmissible, classed as an illegal migrant and could be forcibly relocated 4,000 miles south to rebuild their life in East Africa. We as two ministers stand here today absolutely committed to changing some of the norms around the broken global migration system because for too long other countries and by the way naysayers just sit on their hands and have been watching people die. The Migration and Economic Development Partnership sees the UK send an initial £120 million for educational projects in Rwanda in return for the small African state helping deal with what's become a humiliation for ministers who promised to control Britain's borders. Record numbers of asylum seekers arriving across the channel in small boats. What's going on here? Got to... The Prime Minister was in Dover today to launch a series of policies designed to show the government getting serious with the problem of people traffickers. This innovative approach, driven by our shared humanitarian impulse and made possible by Brexit freedoms, will provide safe and legal routes for asylum while disrupting the business model of the gangs. But the centrepiece of the response is the deal with Rwanda. If it happens, this is where the first of those flown to Kigali will be housed, currently a private hostel. Is it reserved for people coming from Britain? That's yes. right. Today's guided tour also included a meeting with a Yemeni refugee who has successfully made his home in the country. The weather is, is really great the whole year, no change. Uh, yeah, I think this is most of the things that I like. Many, though, have profound concerns about the practicality, the cost and the humanity of this deal. The British government sending often traumatised asylum seekers halfway around the world to rebuild their lives in a country they've never been to. Rwanda is still a country recovering from genocide. Half a million people killed in the mid-90s. Criticised by the UK for its human rights record last year, this may seem an odd choice of partner to entrust with protecting the human rights of traumatised and vulnerable asylum seekers. Israel scrapped a similar arrangement with Rwanda in 2018 after it emerged that asylum seekers ended up in the hands of people traffickers. There were accounts of rape, torture, enslavement and murder as desperate refugees headed north to try to get into Europe across the Mediterranean. Opposition politicians were united in condemning the deal. They're unworkable, they're extortionate, they're going to cost taxpayers billions of pounds and they just reflect a Prime Minister who's got no grip, no answers. It's clearly not going to work. Um, there's no evidence that it will stop these appalling organised criminal gangs, these traffickers, uh, and it's going to be incredibly expensive as well. I think it's horrendous. I think it's a pathetic, desperate and cruel political stunt. I think it's going to do real harm to refugees and asylum seekers. It'll do absolutely no harm to people smugglers. The hope to stop the small boats. The ambition, potentially for tens of thousands of people to be packed onto planes to Rwanda. The reality, a government expecting a challenge in the courts, seeking to scupper this proposal before it begins. Mark Easton, BBC News, Rwanda. Well, one of the main aims of the policy is to stop people from making the treacherous journey across the Channel. More than 28,500 people crossed in small boats last year. That's almost a tenfold increase on four years ago. 
This year looks set to exceed that number. So far, over 4,500 people have arrived. Official figures show that just over half of all asylum claims are successful. Our correspondent Jessica Parker has been speaking to some of those who are planning to cross the channel and has sent this report from Dunkirk. A makeshift village in northern France, sandwiched between woods and railway tracks. Men collect firewood, children play games. The long wait for a better life than this. Mr Johnson said the scheme would be uncapped. It was literally news to these men that some who reach England could be sent to Rwanda. Shafi, who tells me he fled Afghanistan, says it's double standards. They're welcoming all the Ukrainian people in their houses. We heard that, you know, everyone in the world, they're welcoming Ukrainians in their house. We're asked a lot of questions. Who will they send? When? Why? So everyone wants a better future. And if they take us to Rwanda, what are we going to do there? Like... It's, it's a lot worse place than Afghanistan, right? There is no future for us in Rwanda. Uh, will that make you think twice about trying the journey? No, we have no other choice. We will still go there. We will still try our best. You know, let's see what happens there. We will still try to go there. There are women and children here, but it is mostly single men. And they're not the only ones taken aback by the government's plans. Rwanda? <laughs> Vraiment? You can see what local volunteer Marie thinks. It's horrible and absurd. It doesn't make sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Why would the government do something like that? In the UK, it's expected these plans will be challenged in the courts, but people in Dover say a solution is needed. I feel for them. They're human beings like us, and they're fleeing from their, their circumstances. But equally, we can't carry on forever taking everyone. Obviously, they've got to go somewhere. So, yeah, perhaps it would uh, be for a better idea, rather than them coming straight into Dover all the time. Those living in the camp are on long journeys. The English language, family, reasons frequently given about why they want to reach the UK. Hundreds of people are living in this camp just outside Dunkirk in northern France, and they don't seem, those we've spoken to, particularly deterred by the idea that they could be sent to Rwanda if they reach the UK. They accept it might be a risk, but what they tell us is they've already risked so much to get this far. And many still willing to risk their lives crossing the English Channel, a border force ship bringing more people ashore today. Safe for now, but with uncertain futures. Jessica Parker, BBC News, in Dunkirk, northern France. Let's speak now to our political correspondent, Helen Catt at Westminster. Helen, this is an issue that has bedeviled governments for a number of years now. Is this policy the answer? Well, it's certainly very different to what's been tried in the past. Previous solutions have tended to focus on agreements with France or on the channel itself, things like security checks or fences. There are really big questions about if this policy will work, if it's even the sort of thing that the UK should be doing. It is likely to face legal challenges. I think the government's calculation is likely to be, though, that it will get some political credit for putting forward a clear policy on this that is big and it is new. And it is absolutely crucial for the government to be seen to be getting a grip on this issue because of the promises that were made in the Brexit campaign about taking back control of borders. When you've got images of people turning up on beaches, sometimes on a daily basis, that completely undermines that promise. Of course, the other thing today's announcement has done is to get us talking about policy again, ahead of next month's local elections and ahead of next week. When Parliament returns from its recess, Boris Johnson is going to face more questions about what he said to MPs about lockdown parties. He said today he'll set the record straight next week. Helen, many thanks.